this, my question is for Toby Walsh. Can you dis discuss your work on the campaign to stop killer robots and the ethical concerns surrounding the development of autonomous weapons? Thank you, Zara. Thank you. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Um, yeah, this, I mean, this is the, the other thing, apart from misinformation, that does keep me awake at night, is the way that technology gets used um, on the battlefield, and in particular how AI is being used. Historians of war look back at the First World War and say, technology completely transformed the way we fought war. We introduced tanks and machine guns. That was a step change in the way we fought. And historians of war, I'm pretty sure, are going to sadly look back at what's happening in Ukraine and say, again, that was another step change, where we handed over those decisions, the decisions as to who lives and who dies, to machines. And there are lots of moral, legal, and technical reasons to be concerned about that. It's going to change the character of war. Um, the machines are not accountable. Um, and um, it, is, it is something where we get a choice. There are technologies that we have decided to regulate. We've decided to regulate chemical weapons, biological weapons, cluster munitions, blinding lasers. Actually, there's, there's quite a, a number of different technologies. We've just decided we're just abhorrent to fight war with. We've got plentiful means of fighting war and defending ourselves. Um, and I hope um, that you know, the campaign is successful. I've spoken half a dozen times now at the UN about these issues. Um, and there is actually a, a very significant vote happening this week in the United Nations around this topic. I hope Australia votes on the right side of history um, about you know, this is another technology where we should think about regulating it. Um, that was very much a specific question to you, but is that something that you think about too? Do you have concerns about... We all dream of killer robots, right? Yes. <laughs> um, I do, actually. <laughs> um, do you... <laughs> it's interesting to know yeah. about you. Um, Here to share. So, so, look, you know, on this particular issue, because I have a background in the United States Department of Defense, um, I do take it very seriously, the idea of uh, human in the loop in, uh, in all lethal decision-making and all lethal contact, I think, is, is imperative. How we regulate that, I don't know. But I, I think at, at a higher level, um, this conversation gets at one of those risks that you asked about in the beginning. And the biggest risk to me is that Australia just lets this go. How? By focusing on regulation instead of building. That's what I'm most What do you afraid. mean by that? Well, I think, you know, um, uh, we've heard a lot about, uh, in this discussion, about the possible need for regulation. We haven't heard very much about what we're all excited to be building. And we, we hear that also in the national dialogue from federal ministers and the government, where we're going to be an AI regulato regulatory leader, not a leader in AI, not a leader in building the next, you know, deck of corn companies. No, 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 a leader in making rules. And as an American who moved to Australia, I can tell you that one thing I learned is that Australians love rules. And, <laughs> and... I think we should proudly clap at that. <laughs> we like rules, and you're telling us that's not cool. If, if I made a What's so if, not cool about it? What if I made a rule about less rules? Uh, or what, uh, what if... <laughs> So what if we, what if in 2020 we'd made a rule about putting masks on, treating ourselves civilly as a society, rather than the free for all in the US? So, <laughs> so, 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 so Whoa, well, well, this panel's bit, getting feisty. A, How about that bit, rule? <laughs> You know, you can do a reductio ad absurdum, uh -huh. ad logical fallacy here, right? Uh, I didn't say no rules. <laughs> it's about, pri I, like, I like not getting killed in my car, for instance. Yeah, uh, that's um, a good rule. I like, I like food safety. Um, I, like, I like the mask rules, in fact. Uh -huh. My point is, when we prioritize, right, what we had prioritized in that case was the medical research that allowed us to develop a vaccine. That was the priority, finding the solution. And in this case, we're prioritizing the rule instead of the solution, or instead yeah, of... You have to do both. Right? You have to do that. And I don't really think there's a lot of regulation going on. The federal minister is talking about us being a regulatory leader, not a leader in the technology. Ye but is that because the innovation is already happening within Australia? There are already very clever people doing very clever things in the space, and maybe the push at the moment doesn't need to be give them more resources. It's make sure that the work that they're doing is, you know... I don't think it's that, right? I don't think it's... I actually don't think it's that. Australia is well behind the rest of the world with its maturity in AI. We have less than ten, a tenth of the investment 
per capita as a country but such as the US. we still make cool stuff. Oh, a little <laughs> bit of cool stuff. Not a lot. I, I chair a venture capital fund called Boab AI, which funds young Australian AI companies, and we struggle to find many. We've got 20 great ones, but we struggle to find many. So I don't think we're going to race any time soon ahead of the rest of the world in being the great AI nation, I think there is an opportunity for us to be a trusted brand. And I know that's what you, Doug, are trying to do. I think that's right. Well, yeah, I like that way you did that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, Doug, what are you trying to do? I think, I think it's important to do both, right? Yeah. I think you have to have conversations with the community about what, what a technology means and what it can deliver and what it can't deliver. You have to have um, a level of regulation that gives the community confidence. So when we talk regulation, let's let's break this up. Right. What does that even well, mean? What we, sort of rules? We talked about the rules about inclusivity, right? I think we talked about how we legislate against AI racism. So that would be okay. a rule. That would be some regulation that you could bring in. But I think it's also about bringing the community along a journey so that there's trust in science continues. I don't want to go down a US-style route where we polarise science and technology and a big slab of the population turn their back on things as fundamental as medical research. I think we can do both. I think we're a smart enough nation to be able to contribute to innovation but in an ethical way that the community has confidence Would in. Would you like us to be a regulatory leader? I'd like us to be an innovation leader and I'd like us to have the regulation through, for example, discussions that the National AI Centre are catalyzing, I'd like us to have those conversations openly with the community. It is a little bit funny if Australia becomes the AI cop. Like, that's a bit <laughs> no, funny. it's not going to happen, right? It is a bit funny to think about, that. I kind of like the idea of being the AI cop. I mean, just as a con concept. Well, it's but... better than being the backwater country that Silicon Valley entrepreneurs come to well, make money. Well, you don't want to be, where, like, the pirate sort of place where everyone's going nuts. <laughs> but honestly, did we get the regulation right? With social media? No. I mean, <laughs> like nobody did, right? No, and, so, and that's, that's what... But, but, hold, but hold on, hold that on. Is, that is an issue. No, no, but the, but the question... Is, but the question We're paying for it. The question is, when do you enact that? What is your priority, right? It would be a little silly to make all sorts of rules about social media in a way that stifled the Australian community that could have been building Facebook or whatever, and instead someone else who just didn't care about our rules did it, did it somewhere else, right? That's the story of Australian innovation, much to my deep regret, right? We saw it with solar cells, we saw it with early computing in the 40s and 50s. It has always been this idea that something starts here and then it goes somewhere else. Now, we are committed in the quantum sector that this will not happen because of companies like mine and my, and my colleagues dedicated to building here first, right? And there will be rules around quantum. There is no question about it. People are already talking about export controls on this. But the rules have to follow building something. And I think in the AI sector, we have to build and then understand how to constrain it. Otherwise, you Can just I give make a rules. Oh, really that's extreme that's example, yeah. though. We could be making fantastic innovations if there were no ethics around, like, uh, human testing. There are, there are real things that we could learn if there were no ethics around that, but there kind of have to be. So as, as beautiful as it may be to be able to just innovate and not worry about regulation oh. or worry about it second, I don't know, man. Seems Polite, spicy. Politely, like <laughs> we, we've gotten into this into this discussion where it's either a complete free for all yeah. and everybody murders each other, right? <laughs> or it's the yeah, current it's, standard it's of what. It's that binary. So you're right? saying there's a middle ground. Uh, there is there is a big Absolutely. continuum in the middle, right? And we don't have to take these extreme positions in order to find the right way forward. All I am saying is that in the prioritization, if we don't also build, the rules are useless. Quick word from you, Katrina, before yeah, we get yeah. to our next question. So, I have to say, Michael, it's like a classic technologist speaking. <laughs> um, there's a lot of damage and hurt that is caused because technology isn't properly regulated and that we release it on the world like they did in November last year when the world changed forever, when ChatGPT was released. There is a lot of harm that is caused by these machines. There's a lot of harm that's been caused by social media over the years. We have to get ahead of it. So I work um, now in trying to get regulation ahead of the metaverse coming because take all these problems, put them in a 3D immersive environment and put them at scale, then we have the metaverse, which will be another really difficult place where a lot of harm is caused. So I am interested in looking after humans 
And one way to do that is to start thinking of regulation before this technology is so invasive.